right? So if I have, I'm one brand and I create a X campaign, the amount, the allotment that I'm going to get from AT&T and from T-Mobile and from Verizon could be different for each one within a single campaign. Is that correct? Essentially, yes. There are different levels of throughput um, that there, there, there are slight differences. The key thing here is that, as you said, compared to what was happening with in long codes, unsanctioned long code ATP traffic, you are able to utilize a single number. So if you were using 10,000 numbers before to get your throughput, you now can use one. Um, maybe you have a backup number, but let's just say you have one number. That one number enables you to get the throughput that you need to be able to operate effectively. So I don't know. I mean, Aaron, what's the, I don't know if we should necessarily go into all of the intricacies of pricing, but you know, a single number has a value to it that people will charge totally. out. Yep. You know, multiply that by 10,000, that is your monthly saving, potentially if you're using 10,000 numbers, right? Um, of course, I mean, the people issuing numbers would be like, my God, we, we, <laughs> you're taking some of our business away. But mm -hmm. the whole point is that people will be able to feel that they don't have to go through all of this number rotation and, and trying to replace numbers as they were kind of being overused. And, and you get to that scenario where, uh, businesses can uh, almost start to look at, at a, a local 10-digit number uh, as identifying with them, like you do with a short code. You get a short code and it identifies with you because you've paid a monthly fee to lease that short code. But with a number, you know, you're paying also a monthly fee. It's, it's on a, a lease basis. But totally. you're getting this number and you can, you can start to say, well, actually, this number identifies with us. We actually like this number. It's ideal for us. It's, you know, maybe it's a Chicago number. And that Chicago number, it's, it's, that's our headquarters. And that's where we want to be known as a strong Chicago company. That's really key. Mm -hmm. And I think when you look at throughput and when people are looking at throughput, where they should be looking for guidance are from companies such as, 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 as yourself, Darren, you know, with Telegram mm -hmm. because when you're looking at what you can do, you need to go to your CSP as a brand and go, this is how we send messaging. This is how we breaks down in terms of, or, or this is how we think it breaks down in terms of where our demographics are based on the, each of the carriers. Uh, so we think maybe, maybe we're sending equally to each carrier. Maybe we're sending 75% AT&T. Uh, and so when people understand that how their messaging split is can help a CSP to be very effective at guiding them to the best possible way of ensuring that they get maximum throughput for their needs and not necessarily because, you know, if, if, you, if people say, oh, you know, I can go through a special business review at T-Mobile and it gets me X, you may not need to. Right, That's the whole totally. thing. You, you may not need to go through the admin of that and the time in that to get what you need. It could be you can say, actually, if as long as we get a reasonable vetting score that gets us into this level with T-Mobile, we've got what we, what we need. Um, and with AT&T, yeah, maybe we need to do something else there to, to really push to get a, a higher throughput. So it's really just... The people have in the past just looked at, we just need one throughput. With the way the carriers are working now, um, the CSPs understand what each carrier does and how they do it. And it's working with the CSPs really closely so that you really get the best uh, choices and the best options by working with somebody that understands that market. 